On paper, it must be pretty easy to do a remake or remaster correctly. Keep everything that people enjoyed about the original game, remove or improve what didn't work the first time around, slap in some haptic feedback, and you're set. Nice and simple. I mean, there's probably some design and coding and stuff like that involved, but I can't imagine that's very difficult. And sure enough, a good deal of remakes and remasters are received quite well by their intended audiences. What's more, all gamers seem to have a fantasy list of remakes and remasters in their heads, hoping each E3 that they'll see some evidence that a beloved game from their past will rise from the dead. Let's just hope that when they do finally get their wish, it's not anything like the 10 games on this list, which didn't seem to get the memo that video games, remade or not, are supposed to be, you know, good. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 worst video game remakes and remasters. Number 10. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD Don't worry, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD isn't this remake from 2020, it's this one from 2012. I have to highlight this fact because they are both remakes of the same games. The difference is one of them is exceptional and the other is on this list. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater HD is a remake of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, and there was DLC that added material from Pro Skater 3. All of that probably sounds great until you realise that the package doesn't quite include all of the content from the games. It's missing Creator Park, Creator Skater and Split Screen Multiplayer. It features fewer skaters, fewer levels, brand and new control issues to enjoy, and lots of glitches. It's also lacking reverts, unless you paid for the DLC that puts the move back in the game, and is lacking many of the original songs from the soundtrack. That latter difference was framed by developers as being intentional. The game's lead designer said, we wanted to pick new songs that had potential where, five years from now, people hear the songs and they think of this game. Mission accomplished, as nobody thinks about either the songs or this game, and almost certainly never will. Number 9. Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered Assassin's Creed has a decent history with remasters. The Ezio Collection, Rogue Remastered, and the Rebel Collection are all just there, but they all at least do the job they've set out to do. Assassin's Creed 3 on the Nintendo Switch, however, is a travesty. The biggest problem is that it's fundamentally worse than the original. The primary job of a remaster is to enhance the game's presentation and performance, but the Switch version of Assassin's Creed 3 looks worse than it did seven years earlier, and it introduces frame rate issues of its own. It's also baffling as to why this was brought to Switch in the first place. For those who haven't played an Assassin's Creed game before, this is possibly the worst place to start, as it's arguably the most forgettable and tedious of the entire franchise. Wouldn't Switch owners have preferred the Ezio collection instead? Or if we really want to dream big, a version of Assassin's Creed 3 that is not a mess. Wild ideas, I know. Number 8. GoldenEye 007 Reloaded GoldenEye 007 Reloaded is a bit of an anomaly. This particular Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 title is actually a remaster of the Wii game GoldenEye 007. GoldenEye 007 on the Wii is itself a remake of the original GoldenEye 007 on the N64, which was also a movie tie-in. So GoldenEye 007 Reloaded is a remaster of a remake of a movie adaptation. Understand? It's also, if we're being technical, more of a reimagining than a remake, as it's noticeably different from the original. Do try and keep up, 007. In this version of the game, the Bond character model is based on Daniel Craig, not Pierce Brosnan. No points for guessing which of the two actors was actually in the film GoldenEye. It also deviates heavily from the original's plot and gameplay. In fact, the only way it's identifiable as a remake is that the level names are similar and the game itself has the same name. GoldenEye 007 Reloaded got lost in the shuffle when pitted against the likes of Call of Duty and Battlefield, and understandably so. On the Wii, the game wasn't exactly up against a wealth of other first-person shooters. Remastering it for other consoles only really succeeded in proving how little it had to offer. Number 7. Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis for the Game Boy Advance was released in celebration of the original game's 15th anniversary, and you'd think it would be difficult to get it wrong. Sonic the Hedgehog is a beloved game, and hardware had advanced enough that the groundbreaking console title was now playable on a handheld. So long as the conversion was competent, we'd be looking at a very welcome release. The first disappointment came from how little the GBA version added to the game, with the main additions being the spin dash and a save feature. The second disappointment came from literally 
literally everything else. Sonic the Hedgehog Genesis featured copious glitches, slowdown, presentational downgrades, and really poor sound design. This is all particularly appalling in the face of the Sonic Advance series, which was released years before this game and which already proved that the GBA was more than capable of handling a satisfying Sonic experience. Number 6. Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone this cheap knockoff of Billy the Wizard Rocket Broomstick Racing was originally released on the PlayStation 1. Now, you'd think the remake would have appeared maybe a decade later, yeah? Maybe seven years at a push? Medieval was a PS1 game and that took until 2019 to be remade. The Spyro and Crash games had similar gaps between the originals and their remakes. Alas, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone only took two years to get a full remake, and as I'm sure you've guessed this far into the video, it wasn't good. While the PS1 version may look like this, at least it wasn't just an asset flip. The remake, released two years later for the GameCube and PS2, directly copied the world map and all of the spells from the sequel, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. That's an unbelievably cheap move, though I'm a bit impressed that the developers managed to steal from the game's own sequel while somehow making both games look worse for it. Number 5. 13. The most recent horror show on this list, and the inspiration for it as well. 13 was an arcade shooter from the PS2 era. It stood out at the time for its comic book aesthetic and even garnered a bit of a cult following. It received mixed reviews at launch, and it's fair to say that the game wasn't the easiest thing to love, but its unique art style went a long way to making it a standout. In short, it offered a near-perfect foundation for a remake, a lot of excellent ideas, and plenty of room for improvement. Then the remake came out and steadfastly refused to make any of those improvements, instead making the game glitchier and less interesting in every regard. Character models warp hideously, cutscenes fail to trigger, audio frequently forgets to exist, and the game's art style, the one thing literally everybody loved about the first game, was reworked to be as dull and generic as possible. There is a little justice in the world, however. The 13 remake was so uniformly hated that its negative publicity inspired plenty of newcomers to pick up the original instead. In fact, the original ended up outselling the remake for a time. That is a success story, though not the one the developers probably intended. Number 4. Warcraft 3 Reforged when the average gamer hears the word Warcraft, they usually assume it should be prefaced by World Of. Yes, the iconic MMO has undeniably taken the limelight from its older brother, the real-time strategy series Warcraft. You've got to feel sorry for fans of Warcraft 3. They waited 18 years for an upgraded version of the game, only for Blizzard to flop this abomination of a remaster onto the table. Combine it with Blizzard's, shall we say, questionable business practices, And this kind of lacklustre outcome was almost inevitable. If anything, this remaster took more away from the 2002 classic than it actually added. The once-promised graphical overhauls were only half complete, making everything seem aesthetically disjointed. They even left certain cutscenes out completely. Not only did they ruin the new version, but they ruined the previous one as well. By trying to make both versions compatible with one another, they removed a bucket load of features from the original game, which naturally went down about as well as… well removing features from a classic game to improve a bad remake. Number 3. Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop In what might better be described as a demake, Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop was a recreation of the first game in the series, stripped back so that it could run on the Nintendo Wii three years after the original and two mediocre reviews. While the first Dead Rising is a classic and one of the best zombie games of all time, this version was one of many missteps that would go on to tarnish the series. And by that, I mean every game released after the first one. Well, Case Zero was an alright time and Dead Rising 2 was campy fun, but I digress. Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop's main gimmick was the ability to aim with the Wii Remote. That much was fine, but the mall was significantly smaller, the countdown clock was taken out, Frank could no longer jump, and the camera mode was eliminated. They even took out many of the survivors, but, and this does redeem it a bit, they did add zombie poodles, so, you know. Number 2. Mafia 2 Definitive Edition Before we begin tearing into Mafia 2 Definitive Edition, I will concede that it fulfills the basic requirements of a remaster. The textures are nicer, and it's on a newer system. Frankly, if it got that bit wrong, I'd be very surprised, but credit where it's due. The problem with the 2010 game in 2020 is that it feels like a 2010 game in 2020. Quality of life issues from a decade prior that have been ironed out in later AAA games are back and stand out more than ever. 
A good remaster would address these wrinkles, but Mafia 2 Definitive Edition is not a good remaster. Bugs from the original release still reside in this new version, as well as a whole host of new ones. You guys see lost him. Him. You guys see lost him. him! You guys see him! You guys see him! You guys see him! Frame rate issues, audio problems, and a wealth of technical issues make this a chore to play rather than the exciting dip back into a classic that it should have been. When the original game was released, an activist for the families of real world Mafia victims called for the game to be banned. She could have just waited a bit for the definitive edition, at which point nobody would have wanted to play it anyway. Number 1. Silent Hill HD Collection Ah, oh, Konami, why are you always so… you? From the golden age of arcades right through to the PS2 era, Konami was gaming royalty. Now, they are the video game equivalent of the funky liquid in the bottom of your bin that never seems to dry. Bin juice. Konami a bin juice. Over the past few years, they've worked very hard to take every one of their beloved IPs and run them into the ground. New Silent Hill? Dead. Metal Gear? This thing. Contra? We don't talk about Contra. And they did all of this in favour of pachinko machines. You'd think a Silent Hill HD collection would be an easy win. The games are classics, and literally the only thing fans would ask for are competent ports to more powerful hardware. Instead, well, here we are. The problem started with the announcement that the collection would only contain Silent Hill 2 and 3. That's not the worst thing imaginable, but it was puzzling. Why leave out 4, which was originally designed for the same hardware? Why leave out the first game, which had the most to gain from an HD conversion? Little did anyone know these would be the least of our worries. See, Konami didn't have the source code for the games in the collection. That means that instead of polishing up the existing titles, the developers in charge of the remakes had to actively recreate them. For Hijinx games, best known prior to this for their work on three karaoke revolution Glee games, this was an impossible task. Asking a no-name developer to rebuild a large part of the games from scratch while also trying to upgrade them and fix the problems that were previously patched out of the original versions only served to frustrate the team and disappoint fans. The ultimate release was an understandably buggy mess that failed to integrate some of the game's most defining features, such as the fog, and replaced lost fonts with Comic Sans. The Silent Hill HD collection ended careers and ruined the series for an entire generation of fans. But hey, at least Konami didn't waste any precious hard drive space on that pesky source code. And that's our list. If we were to remake it with different entries, what would you change? Why not let us know in the comments below? You can follow myself and Triple Jump on Twitter here, and while you're at it, why not support the things you enjoy by having a look at our Patreon? Finally, don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and thanks for watching.